So I just wanted to say welcome to the community chat, Reclaim Community Chat. And this is August. We haven't done one for at least a month or two because we've had a conference on top of a virtual conference on top of travel. So it's nice to be back um, in the lap of community luxury. And we have a special guest today um, that we brought on after going to WordPress campus, um, Meredith, myself, and Lauren went to WordPress campus in New Orleans in the dead of July. And it was actually wonderful. Even the weather, as hot as it was on yeah. Sunday, I walked around. I really enjoyed the city in sweltering heat. So it was a great time. Yes, I agree. And um, we actually heard Bonnie talking about some of the work they're doing um, at Michigan State University at the Mesh Lab to kind of rethink um, social networks in the age of activity pub. Um, and I was compelled, as many were. And so I asked Bonnie to join us today to talk a little bit about the work happening there and hopefully for us to have a conversation post facto to talk about some of the impact of that and what that looks like. So Bonnie, welcome. And um, feel free to introduce yourself, to talk a little bit about the work, and then share, talk, dance, whatever. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants me to dance. Um, <laughs> so I'm Bonnie Russell. I am the product manager for Humanities Commons and the project manager for Mesh Research at Michigan State University. Uh, I have a library science degree. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a library science degree, uh, so my background is in libraries. It's also um, arts-based. Uh, my bachelor's in film, is in film studies with a minor in theater. So I come sort of from a, a varied background. I spent 10 years in scholarly publishing as well. Uh, so I also have an eye to the publishing, and that's something that, that I can talk about later. Um, so in 2021, uh, the Michigan State University took over the commons from the Modern Language Association in 2020. In 2021, our tech lead, our project director, Kathleen Fitzpatrick, and I were talking about the next generation of the commons. Um, to give you a little background on the commons, we have about 52,000 members across seven nodes. When I say nodes, the commons is a multi-site, multi-network. Um, so not only are we a network site, but we have networks within the network. Um, and that enables us to allow uh, MSU and MLA to have uh, the ability for users to spin up their own WordPress-based sites. So if you joined Humanities Commons today, you could fill out your profile. You could spin up a WordPress-based site and uh, for a project, for a class, for just a personal portfolio. Um, you could deposit work in our open access repository and you could create a group or join a group uh, to talk about things that interest you. Um, so in the, in the course of discussing this, Mike had brought up the activity pub standard and all of us were familiar with it. You know, we, we, I'd sort of played with Mastodon here and there, and I thought about some other things. And the more we looked at it, the more we realized that as our multi-network site gained members and content, we were starting to run up against really the sort of natural limit to how much WordPress can handle in a single installation and thought about federation. And so what we've done is we've uh, secured a grant. We've got a grant from the Mellon Foundation and a second grant from the National Science Foundation to go ahead and build the next generation commons. Uh, what we will do is we're currently uh, in the beginning process of this, Mike is working on an API. Uh, and we will start the build of the actual next gen commons probably by end of year. Um, I do have a few slides. And so I'm wondering if I can, let's see. Yeah, let's see if they share. If there's any issue and you want to like shoot them over to me, let me know. But let's see if you're yeah, I'm issue sharing. Window. Oh, it looks like I'm going to be able to. <gasps> Great. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is what I just talked about. Uh, we have seven nodes, 52,000 members. We also have an open access repository with 22,000 deposits in 33 languages. Um, that stat was from earlier this year. We may actually have more than that now. Uh, and we are gaining deposits in multiple languages regularly. Um, so this is our current site architecture. It's a single multi-site, multi-network installation. 
the great thing is you can run updates on one site, your user permissions sit in one place. The bad side is, is that we're responsible for all the maintenance, uh, maintenance and administration, and it's really hard to scale. So plan site architecture. This is what we're moving to. Sites will be split into separate instances. You know what, I'm going to do a little, Actually, that didn't really, did that work? That didn't work. It did. Yeah, we, We're we full screen the here. Slide. Oh, great. Okay. So uh, basically what this is, is that users would have their home commons. So you might be a member of Humanities Commons. You might be a member of MLA Commons. Um, these commonses will be able to then choose who to federate with. We're bringing on uh, STEM Ed Plus Commons in 2025. STEM Ed Plus Commons will be for... STEM educators, um, but also looking for collaboration with people from the arts, with humanities, and things like that. Um, activity Pub will be used to interact between sites and other Activity Pub compatible clients. So that means Mastodon, PixelFed, Lemmy, any of the other sort of Activity Pub compatible clients. And it allows people to control their own instances. And really, what a federated open commons promises is fundamental change to who participates in the creation and dissemination of knowledge, how they do so, and where the power in the, those relationships lies. Um, so for instance, smaller instances would require less powerful servers. So for, in, for institutions or organizations that don't have a lot of funding, that's a plus. Um, and larger instances experiencing a lot of traffic wouldn't actually slow things down. Um, and the nice thing about this is all of those instances will be able to connect to our open access repository for their members to be able to share their work. So what's next? Um, we're building the Commons API. Now that API will actually work for others as well. So we're looking at, we've got librarians who are interested in pulling information from our repository. We've got others, including ORCID that we're talking with to be able to allow the information to go back and forth so people don't have to re, re, uh, re key in all of the information from their profiles. Uh, our groups and profiles will be rebuilt using the Active, Active, Activity Pub protocol. Um, so you'll be able to have conversations where people are. Uh, and then this particular model is going to phase in over the next couple of years. Um, Building.hcommons.org is actually Mike Thick, our tech leads blog, and he is actively talking about the very technical details of this. And I would recommend anyone who's interested in the real technical details and the information about how we're doing this to follow that. Um, and then this is my email. Um, I'm on Mastodon at Bats and Lavender at H Commons Social. Uh, and please feel free to reach out. Uh, and if you want information on the team, site governance, and vision and mission statements, um, sustaining.hcommons.org. So let's see now. That was very efficient, Bonnie, I have to say. I was going to say, I really <laughs> try. Um, a building.hcommons.org. That's awesome. Yeah, that knowing that there's a blog where that's being documented is amazing. So let me ask you this, seeing your overview um, slide mm -hmm. and knowing something about WordPress multi-site and net multi-networks mm -hmm. with this new activity pub, will it still basically be a WordPress site, but using mm -hmm. various WordPress federated instances? Yes. And then people can share there as ever they like using RSS, using, you know, Mastodon, yes. like what does it look like practically? So practically, the plan is uh, we are based, we are a forked version of Commons in a Box, which was developed at CUNY. Um, we have made our Commons uh, uh, code available to others. So people can spin up a Commons whenever they want right now. Uh, what we're planning on doing and what we're currently doing for Invenio, which is the open access repository that we're implementing which was uh, the, the platform was developed by CERN, is we're actually contributing plugins to that particular platform. The plan is to do the same for WordPress. 
So we are developing the API. We will develop the plugins. And I know that WordPress, I did have a discussion at WP Campus with one of the WordPress re representatives that were there. They're working on integration with ActivityPub as well on the WordPress side. I think that we may be a little ahead. <laughs> and so we're planning on writing plugins to allow this to happen. Um, and so Mike could answer the specific technical areas, but there is some information on building the comments about this. But the plan is, is to make that available to everyone so that, you know, certainly our participating organizations, and I should probably stop and explain what a participating organization is. The commons is currently grant funded, but we're moving toward a plan for sustainability. One of the things that we're doing is where we've got participating organizations who essentially underwrite the ability for us to provide all of our tools for free to individuals. So any scholar, any student, any interested person can join the commons, make a website, create their profile, publish their, their content and do that all for free. Um, that is intended to continue. We intend to provide these tools for free to anyone who comes. Um, and the participating organizations are part of that. What the participating organizations will get then is their own commons um, that will federate with the nodes that they choose to federate with, including the main commons, which humanities commons is sort of the main hub of the site now. That will transition to an interdisciplinary space. And then humanities commons will be one of the nodes. And so that interdisciplinary space will sort of be the hub node. And then you can choose to federate. You'd, you'd federate with the hub, right? And then you can choose to federate with any of the other nodes. And so what that does, it will allow people, much like I think, I, I've been thinking about it kind of the way that Lemmy and Kabin work, where you've got the ability to have your magazines on Kabin, which are on your instance, but then you can also follow other instances on Lemmy, you can follow, you know, topics on Lemmy, you can follow things like that. So that that is the intention. So MLA may have some public and they do have some public groups that anyone can join as long as they're a commons member. Those you could join in this model, but the information would be in ActivityPub, would be moved by ActivityPub. And so one of the things that we're also looking at with the open access repository is we are also looking to eventually incorporate some peer review. We have a number of open access journals on the commons. They've been interested in this. Um, and some scholars just want to do open peer review. Kathleen Fitzpatrick has done open peer review on her last two books. And so uh, the intention will be that the comments that are made would also be facilitated through activity pubs. So you could actually post to Mastodon and have conversation there that would then appear on that deposit page. So that is the plan. And then you could also then syndicate that out. And because of the integration with WordPress, you could potentially put that into a page on your WordPress site and then have conversation there that would then reflect back. So that's the plan. So with, and this, I'm not going to get too technical, but I'm interested like with <laughs> each school that does run one of these federated instances, the yeah. idea is you get all the plugins and stuff for free, yeah. but you have to stand up and host your own instance. Correct. And so that in some ways liberates you a little bit. And then they'll all have standards that they have to follow in order to be part of that federation. Yeah. Gotcha. We will have standards. We have. So if you look at our, um, our Mastodon server, we have very clear policies. I was actually the person that wrote those policies. So if you have questions on those, I can answer them. I used them um, for DS106. As an <laughs> I literally yeah, stole right. them. So thank you. More power to you. I'm happy when things get reused. Um, and I think that that's something that we intend to continue to offer, you know, participating organizations additional support. So they get support for their commons. So certainly if they were to enter in as a, as a participating organization, we would offer them the service of some additional um, potentially, um, you know, help with figuring out federation, help with some of those things. Um, because the intention is to continue to, to provide that in order to raise money to provide the tools for free to everyone. What this opens up, though, and what we're seeing is about 20% of the Commons membership is outside of North America and Europe, 
we've got a ton of members from the Global South. We've got a ton, a ton of members from organizations and from institutions that don't have a great deal of funding that can't afford an open access repository, can't afford to uh, domain, domain of one's own. In fact, I have two projects that are on domain of one's own here at Michigan State. And so what we're looking at is the ability to empower these institutions and organizations that don't have the funding to essentially spin up their own commons on somewhere like Reclaim or on somewhere that, you know, even if they have hosting at their own institution, but they don't have tech support. WordPress is one of the, I think it is actually the top CMS now being used on the web. And so by In utilizing the WordPress, world. yeah, <laughs> by utilizing WordPress, most people are familiar with it. It's pretty easy to stand up. Yeah. And then we're we're providing the plugins and the underpinnings to be able to do that. So it's interesting. And I know other people want to talk, but I'm not going to mm -hmm. let them talk. Um, <laughs> the other thing is that we have we're spinning up something called Reclaim Press. I'll be talking mm -hmm. about that. But what's got me thinking of mm -hmm. kind of like we did with Cbox is you have yeah. an installer. And so you could have a custom template, which has your stuff. And people could say, mm -hmm. this is how much it would cost to run a instance. And mm -hmm. my questions around cost and sustainability really yeah. links back to, so does now the institutions kind of absor absorb that cost for all of those people and what allows people to get on some? Because for yeah. me, the humanities commons seems linked with MSU, but mm -hmm. at the same time, independent of it. Yes. Is that true? And how would that work for different nodes in the Federation that, that kind of- well, We have, out? yeah. So Humanities Commons is really independent in terms of we're, we're supported. We all work for Michigan State. Um, and, you know, I'm on a couple of other projects within Michigan State. Um, but, you know, Humanities Commons is not a Michigan State instance. We have MSU Commons, which you can, it's commons.msu.edu. And we collaborate with the library. The library hosts um, that particular commons. And so that was our proof of concept of how do we spin these up and have them be independently hosted, but still continue to interface. So they're, they're hosting quite a bit of content on there. So we've done the proof of concept for this particular one. And we continue to kind of, that, that will be our test case as we roll out these plugins. Um, to kind of work with our internal MSU folks who are very interested in this to be able to make sure that, yes, this works, and then we'll roll it out to the nodes, and then Brilliant. we'll start rolling it out to the wider community. And so that's basically your pilot test case for all of these plugins that you're developing, yes. and then you can use that. that. Really, thank you for the the deeper dive, because I was trying to understand, like, yeah. is it Mastodon replacing WordPress? But essentially, yeah. it's not. It just provides you know, anyone who has a Mastodon instance as yep. well to pull that all in or do yep. it from there, et cetera. It's really awesome. Anyway, by, I'll shut up, let other people talk. Well, I was going to say, by re-architecting the groups, which are sort of our, our hub of discussion and collaboration into ActivityPub, what you could do then is you could follow those groups with your Mastodon client or pull those into another instance. So, you know, that that is the key. One of the things that is incredibly important to us is making information open, connecting people, not just across institutions, but across countries. And on the roadmap we have, I mean, this is aspirational, but on the roadmap we have potential translation tools to allow people who are working on the same types of work or the same disciplines or the same topics to be able to come together, even if they don't necessarily speak a common language. I mean, that's far in the future, but that's where we want to go is to be a connector so that people are people who are working in STEM, who are looking for um, arts help in terms of communicating scientific topics to non-scientific people. That's what STEM Ed Plus Commons is starting to do. We're working with <clears throat> Julie Labarkin, who's a STEM educator here. She's a, a geologist who is looking at, you know, how can we make science more accessible by using film, sculpture, theater, different ways to communicate these concepts. And so I think that that's something that we intend to do. And I feel like I think the, the team feels that the more we open this up and allow people to kind of choose who they're federating with, choose that information, and maybe turn on that fire hose, you get some really interesting opportunities for collaboration and for new scholarship that haven't 
been seen before because these people don't know that the other exists, right? You've got a, a scholar working in Japanese on a topic and you've got another scholar in the US who's working on a similar topic. They don't speak the same language. They haven't read each other's papers, but perhaps we can connect them and have them, you know, see where some commonalities are. So I think that that's the ultimate goal is really to facilitate that communication worldwide. I think you're muted. Yes, and I am. Gen Z. Muted uh, and Gen Z. <laughs> so uh, I had a kind of quick question, mm -hmm. potentially, Bonnie. Uh, I, I was curious. I'm always kind of thinking about like, I, I think in some ways the folks that are attending this community chat and maybe are watching the recording later are a little bit the choir here of like a lot of the folks coming to this are like in on open <laughs> stuff and decentralized uh, alternatives to uh to traditional social media and stuff i'm everyone but you... chris <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm curious if you have experience or like a go-to mm -hmm. way you like to sell this on folks who maybe have like literally no idea what activity pub is or any of right. this and are like why wouldn't i just tweet to the community of scientists that are in my field how do you how do you talk to people about that that's exactly my example uh, the reason that Humanities Commons was created was that um, there was a group of scholars at MLA, Kathleen Fitzpatrick, who, you know, is is pretty well known in humanities, very well known in humanities circles, let's face it, um, has maintained for a long time, and I think the entire team agrees with her, that the, the problem with corporate owned tools is that you are at the mercy of that corporation, when they make a very drastic change for the bottom line to please, I mean, Reddit just did this right with the whole issue. I was a very big Redditor and, and I'm now kind of mad at them and experimenting with Cabin and Lemmy. Um, and, and when you see the state of academic publishing currently in the corporate publishing and the, the terrible fees for journals and access, that there needs to be an academy owned solution. There needs to be a solution where, and let's face it, if humanities commons cease to exist after this model launches, the wider federation would still exist. Um, the infrastructure that we're building is not necessarily once we release it entirely dependent on us. We realize that somebody asked, well, aren't you engineering yourselves out of work? And the answer is, Maybe, but I'm not sure that that's a terrible thing for the wider good of providing access and disseminating information and kind of bringing some equity. Uh, we see a lot of people using the commons. We've got a lot of universities. In fact, the University of Kashmir or Kashmir University, I guess it is, uh, in India just joined and they have students creating WordPress sites as part of a class. We've got the University of um, uh, there's a Ecuadorian university that it similarly is is using our site to help students learn how to use WordPress and learn how to do some of these things. And we've got scholars who don't have access to traditional publishing uh, for whatever reason, whether it be author fees or just they're at a less prestigious institution, prestigious, prestigious institution, um, who don't have access to sort of being published in in the top journals. And so I think that we make the case of being values led, we make the case of being uh, equitably governed and governed by the participating organizations. And eventually when we get larger, it'll be a group of representatives from the community and that we're nonprofit. And so that's the argument I make. From a technical standpoint, the activity pub standard makes sense because it is A, a standard. Uh, it is growing. Um, you know, we, we realized that it was something that was growing previously and we're on another um, initiative called Core Notify, which is part of the Coalition of Open Access Repositories using the Activity Pub standard to move information and comments between um, repositories, uh, allowing for journals, let's say, to request inclusion in a, an overlay journal, to request uh, you, authors to request peer review, Etc. Um, yeah, it is a little bit of a clunky standard, Chris. I, I I do see that, but I think that we're seeing momentum build 
And I think that, you know, Mike has done a lot of, of looking at that and he could talk better to that piece of it, but I think it's time. And I feel like there's momentum in terms of people understanding that we can't rely on corporate infrastructure and Twitter slash X is a great example of that. Ed had a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he'll, he'll ask it or if he wants me to read it. I do pretty good dictation too. So if that's necessary, um, but Ed. Yeah. So, you know, I wrote in the chat, but there's so many people right now looking at activity pub, mm -hmm. thinking about activity pub. Um, you mentioned kind of like, Oh, I think we're ahead of WordPress. I think we're ahead of buddy press um, who, who are all, you know, talking about activity pub and implementing it. Um, do you see this as a duplication of efforts? Mm -mm. Do, do you think you're making different choices or have different goals? And what do you think you're doing differently than some of these other organizations that are also interested in activity pub? I don't, I don't think that we're, we're duplicating. I think we're making choices based on the, the communication that we're trying to facilitate. Um, I did talk to WordPress. I don't know that we're ahead of WordPress. Um, I know that there is a native plugin that we're actually using currently on the site. Um, in terms of BuddyPress, I haven't talked to anyone at BuddyPress, and we probably should. Um, but I am in the WordPress. I have. I think there's I have like five to developers that are keeping yeah. BuddyPress going, and, and we know them. I, I mean, think. I think it's are. a very small community. Yeah, um, but we. One of the reasons that I have presented at WordPress campus, and we're starting to present this, is that we're actively seeking out people who are doing this work. We know they're out there to start to come together and talk about it and talk amongst ourselves um, because we're looking for collaborators and also for people who are already doing this work and going, oh yeah, we could use that and we're building this. And they say, oh yeah, we could use that. Um, but again, we're planning on making all of this completely open source, completely available to the community. This is not something that we're planning on building some big business of proprietary plugins. Um, and so I think that is a little different. Um, and especially you see in the world, the WordPress community, you know, WordPress has to pay their bills. We do too. Um, but that's, we're nonprofit. We're not for profit. That's a slightly different thing. Um, Buddy Press certainly, you know, has paid plugins and services, so that I think is different. Um, and I think this is very new, right? Like we just literally got to the point of a year of planning and now coming out and talking about this and saying, this is our plan. Our hope is that we can come to WordPress campus next year <clears throat> and actually do a follow-up presentation and say, this is where we're at and this is what we learned. Because we're, we're fully aware that not everything will succeed. And we're fully aware that we're going to run into things we didn't anticipate. And so I think that's what makes this exciting and also terrifying. Um, but you know, I helpful. think if you submit an application to host WordPress campus next year, we could probably fit you in the schedule. <laughs> I'm trying to, I actually am trying to talk the powers that be into that. Michigan so in July would be a lot better, maybe weather-wise. <laughs> Although we have had some terrific, and I mean that in a bad way, storms. Oh, wow. So we're seeing the sort of the the storms, you know, we always have thunderstorms. It's not unusual here. The severity of them has gotten more intense. So that's a thing. But yes, in general, Michigan is beautiful in July. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Ed, this is, you know, we're literally just in the beginning stages of building this. And one of the reasons that we're being now very loud about it is, hey, we're planning on doing this. And what are you doing? And let's talk about it. Um, has, there, has there been any discussion with the folks at Common Box and Open Lab mm -hmm. oh, yeah. to be like, hey, Absolutely. you know, do you have ideas yeah. that we could integrate this? Because obviously we're yeah. seeing at Reclaim a, a big push in interest in CBOX. Yeah. And that's, you know, I wonder if there is, that's an open source project. Yep. Similarly with Matt Gold and Boone and all the oh, folks yeah. at the CUNY Mafia doing that for so long. Yeah. Like, I know there's probably legacy stuff, but there's yeah. also probably they got the grants. They understand how that work goes, yeah. similar to what you all are doing. And that's that sustainability question. Yeah. They're trying to build it into an open source office, from what I understand, around right. CUNY to actually make it institutionally funded, yeah. which gives you all the freedom to do some of this experimentation, which, you know, a pure for-profit company won't. 
yeah. have or do. We talk regularly with Matt. So Matt Gold is someone who's been in conversations with us for the last two years um, on, on a, a, we have a, a sort of group that's centered around sort of Great Lakes um, institutions who are doing open access platforms. So we have um, University of Michigan with Fulcrum, University of Minnesota with uh, Manifold. So we're also talking yeah. to them about how this how this works. Absolutely. And so there's, there's more yeah. conversations happening, but yeah, Matt Gold is absolutely a part of that. And I mean, we were, ba we're based essentially on comments in a box. So um, we do have those conversations. We've had multiple conversations with Boone. Um, and so, you know, we are hooked into that community. And, and I just recently talked with a couple of people um, in, like I said, New Zealand um, with OER, uh, OER Foundation, um, Wayne McIntosh, who's also looking to do this with OER. Um, and so that's a recent thing. And we've made essentially an agreement to say we'd like to get our tech folks together to talk more about what we're doing so that we can potentially talk about ideas or different ways that we're handling things. So yeah, those conversations are happening. Yeah, because Dave Lane, I think, who works mm -hmm. with Wayne, does yeah. some really cool stuff with Mastodon yep. and has been really, so that's, that's exciting. I mean, maybe there is a groundswell yeah. of folks and the fact that you're doing this as an outreach to be like, join us, yeah. help us figure this out is absolutely brilliant. I love it. I mean, we are, we are committed to being open access. We are committed to providing our tools for free to individuals. And so we will need other collaborators and other people who are interested um, but also just thinking about, you know, we joke about wanting to kind of completely turn some of this scholarly communications and, and the sort of d dissemination of knowledge on its ear. And we clearly can't do that on our own, but we can, what we can do is provide opportunity, uh, alternatives, right? Like we can continue to say, we're really thinking about this and we're trying to put the hands, the tools in the hands of the people that are doing it. And one of the things that Federation allows us to do, if you've got a server in a country that doesn't speak English, right now, Word, uh, Humanities Commons is in English, right? Um, someone could have a common server in their own local language. They could have the server in Spanish. They could have it in French. They could have it in Japanese, but still Federate. Um, and so I think that those are the kinds of things that it allows us to do. That's, I mean, great. Other questions? I, I don't like, I could keep on going, but I do want to make sure other folks who do have questions about any of this. I guess one of the questions for me would be like, as you're doing this and as um, Mike Thick, I think the name is, mm -hmm. the one who's talking about Mike that. Thick. Yeah. Mike Thick, is that right? Okay. As you're all building this and mm -hmm. as you're framing it, like, what's the, like what's the path in terms of like reaching you're reaching out to other schools, mm -hmm. but like, do you have folks who are essentially working through some of the, the difficulties with you, some of the setting it up, some of the instances, or is it really just a three person, four person group figuring it out? So our team is currently, um, what did I say the other day? 12 people. 12. Okay. So we've got 12. We've got um, two full-time developers. We've got a half-time infrastructure developer, identity management that's half-time currently shared with our college. Um, we've also got a community team of three people. Um, that includes a GSA. Um, and so we're actively thinking about it. We're also working with our participating organizations. So MLA, AU Presses, uh, Art Research Librarians, um, those instances, they are very on board. In fact, uh, you, the university presses are, are very interested. Wow. Um, Michigan State with the MSU Commons. We've got a number of institutions that are interested that we're currently talking with that I don't want to name. Uh, yeah. But we've got four different institutions that we're talking to right now. Um, plus, we've got our partners at University of Michigan, uh, University of Minnesota, um, that are actively looking at this, hooking in with things like Manifold and Fulcrum. So we've got a number of people thinking through this, not just about the core commons functionality, but the ways in which that these other platforms also might think about this. 
which is really the magic there because you talk about it's not just wordpress it's not just mastodon it's you know you could use manifold you could use yeah. lemmy you could use pixel fed right. like you have now a kind of explosion of potential tools that can right. syndicate and be used for this you know textual like idea of oer which i always think has been one of the great yeah. limitations of that idea so yeah that's super exciting i love it other questions issues and writing like, in the chat i'd love to hear i did want to say so ed brought up librarians and i will say as a librarian for one i'm super excited to see the number of librarians who are interested in this uh not just in our open access repository but in this sort of uh opportunity for oer for open access journals um as i said before we have a, a number of open access journals that have made their home now on on humanities commons and thinking about the ways in which library publishing uh, could also hook into our tools for those libraries that don't have the funding to be able to create their own space. You know, Michigan State is lucky. We have a manifold instance. We have uh, support for press books, right? So there are plenty of, of ways that people can publish. Not all institutions have that either. So, you know, in thinking about getting work out, I just published, I, I'm a co-author on an OER that just published in January, for example. And, you know, in thinking through where to put it, I ended up, it's it's on Reclaim. It's on my domain of one's own account. Um, but yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, it, it it's hard as me, I'm a librarian. I've worked in scholarly communications for, you know, 10 years. And I had a hard time figuring out what to do, right? So that's the other piece of it that we're really working on is um, thinking about how to hook in with other groups, how to hook in. And I haven't talked to anybody in, at University of California in a while. I've talked to them in the past, um, but not in a while. I've talked to the Scalar team as well. Um, some of the other open access publishing platforms that are out there. Um, we're kind of involved with Educopia and talking with the different institutions involved in that. Um, but I believe University of California are managing them with a, a homegrown but I could be wrong. Are they? Because they made a big so. splash, obviously, when they were like, we're not going to buy yeah. any of it. We're going to host all of our own stuff. I think it's homegrown, but really? I can't say that for 100%. Yeah, that would be interesting. And it would be interesting to see if it's homegrown, there are chances mm -hmm. there may be interest yeah. in, you know, federating their homegrown stuff, right? Yeah. And, and that's what this allows us to do, right? If people adopt that standard, then there is the opportunity for federation. And the nice thing about it is it's not, there's no gatekeeping. There's nobody holding anything hostage. It's an open protocol. It's an open, you know, it, I think the biggest frustration that we have and that we're seeing is the sort of corporate holding and people make decisions based on the bottom line. And, you know, we aren't immune from that. We're grant funded. We have to be very careful in how we, you know, continue to move forward. Um, but I think that there's the, the sense for our team, I think there's a, a tremendous sense of the public good that drives us in a way that obviously corporate folks aren't driven. Hey, Bonnie. Yeah. Can I ask you a question about mm -hmm. the infrastructure and how you envision it? Mm -hmm. Are all of the different activity pub like notices mm -hmm. being filtered like as a spider web through a central hub? Yeah. Or is, is, is it more decentralized even than that? And the reason I ask that mm -hmm. is, you know, for a place like California or for a place mm -hmm. like SUNY, yeah. SUNY has one centralized open access repository. Mm -hmm. um, it's called DSpace. Yeah. Um, it's also open source. Yeah. But moving it would be a larger issue than I think we could ever do. And so I'm wondering is, does DSpace need to federate in with your way of thinking or does dspace just need to communicate with the wordpress hub which would then federate with all the other ones like what do, what does the flow look like so dspace would federate with the wordpress hub and then the wordpress hub you know suny's you know future wordpress hub would talk to the humanities commons Correct. to all the other commons really nice that that is the current plan because um, that might make it easier for like with for like what you're talking about with California. Yeah, it's not that you need their system to fully integrate with everything no. that you're doing, but their system does need to talk through an API 
to the WordPress. Yeah, if you want, so if you want to participate, let's say in our groups, I think, you know, you would need to stand up a commons. If you want to pull that information into your own system, that's a different thing. But I think Mike would have a better answer to that. I will say that this is sort of his brainchild along with our other, de our, our other devs. And he's got, I can't tell you the number of Miro boards that are mm -hmm. these highly detailed Miro boards that show exactly how all of this works because he's actually mapped all of this out for all of the rest of us who don't, aren't developers. Um, and eventually I think he will make some of those. And I think he has made a couple of those public on the building blog. Um, but my understanding is, is that, you know, there are, if it's specific commons functionality, then you'd want to stand up your own commons. If you just want the information, then you would just pull that, pull that in or, or, and we are planning on to uh, incorporating RSS feeds and other feeds and the API obviously will exist. So, you know, there's multiple ways to do this. Um, and, and the goal is to let people decide what their level of comfort is and, and where they want to participate. This is not sort of a, you have to use our particular, you know, software and you have to do this and that. It's, here's our, our rules of how we want people to use this. And here's what we ask of you. Um, and certainly, you know, we on our Mastodon, so H Common Social, we have very serious rules and we are moderated to some extent. You know, we still have, you know, we look over people and try to prevent spammers. When we do find them, we ban them heavily. And when, that's my hobby is laying the ban hammer on spammers. So usually I'm the first one to find them and I, I get to lay the ban hammer. And that's very, very exciting to me. My days, my days adminning forums in the 90s and the aughts. Do you have like a like a, a physical hammer? Like even if it's made out of plastic that you put on the desk too, you should like a Thor hammer. I really should. Yeah, I don't, but I should. Yeah, I had a little when I used to uh, administrate a very large forum um, back in the aughts. I had a little like uh, GIF and a, and a thing that I would, you know, so. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I mean, what I really love about what you all are doing at NMSU is what an expansive vision it is for for kind of scholarly communications. Right. And kind of moves it to like, oh, academia you know like we're gonna go put all our stuff there and like making the facebook we're gonna make the same mistakes with the same silo again yeah. and again and finally there's a kind of articulated vision about federation yeah. right and obviously what will follow is sustainability and whether yeah. universities and groups are gonna fund it yeah. but should the two go hand in hand you really do have a a, a compelling alternative yeah. to what seems like a a carousel of denial we've been in with these silo these siloed sites that again and again we do the same thing. I'm like, what happened? Why are we in this situation? It's Groundhog Day. Yeah. Bonnie, I, yeah. I don't remember. Did you mention who is funding your grant? Yeah. So we have we have two grants, two large grants right now. It's the Mellon Foundation and the National Science uh, Foundation. Okay. When you um, run out of money there. Uh, you should have Kathleen call uh, Josh Greenberg at Sloan Foundation okay. because he is super duper into this sort of academic and science communication. And I know specifically he wants this, not necessarily the Federation piece, but the open portion in the back and forth communication. Um, now I know uh, and for some of the history, too, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the Fediverse back into WordPress mm -hmm. has heroically been built by Matthias Pfefferle, who yeah. is a former one-in-one -one senior exec and engineer. Yeah. And I presume that's what you're using his infrastructure for some of this. Yeah. But a, a lot of what you had mentioned before of, hey, I can post this thing on my WordPress website and you can subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. All of that works. So you can follow my particular site and comment in the Fediverse and I'll get that comment back as a comment on my WordPress site, which I, I think is phenomenal. The missing piece, I think, is the front end of 
some of the reader piece yeah. doesn't exist in that space. So I'm curious if you're looking at how to build that from a kind of user facing perspective. Yeah, Mike. Mike's plan is to use React to build that front end um, in WordPress. Um, and so that would be something that would also be available and made public and open. I mean, that is one thing, you know, we are tax funder, funder uh, fun, taxpayer funded through these grants. Um, we're very aware of that. But we also believe that, you know, I think the thing too is that we hope that other people will build on it. Um, so one of the things that we're doing with Invenio RDM right now is we've written a number of plugins that other people are now using and then building on. And so it's the same thing here. Um, you know, we're in Venio RDM in particular, and this is the repository platform that we're implementing that should go out, I think in February, 2024, was developed by CERN, primarily used by those in the sciences. Uh, we're the first humanities sort of facing organization to implement it and have found that there are some things that we need in the humanities that haven't been built out yet. So we're building that out. And so our intention is to build these things out. Um, and then to make them public and in the hopes that other people will also build on this. I mean, I think we're not, we don't see ourselves as the gatekeepers. We're just the people that are starting this and we're, I, it, there's a risk, right? There's a risk in doing something like this that, that nobody else has really tried before. And I think all of us on this team recognize that, but I also think we're very excited about it. Um, because we all realize that the, the infrastructure within academia and, and scholarly publishing, scholarly communication needs to change. Um, and so we've kind of said, we're going to take our best chance at doing some of this. But I think there's always, I think the, that with high risk does come high reward. But I also think that there are enough people interested who are kind of going, oh, wow, that sounds really cool. Um, what might we think about it in our own organizations? And so I think that that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, I, from an infrastructure standpoint too, and I, I, I know she is aware of it because I helped her set it up. Mm -hmm. But um, Kathleen kind of went full indie web for a while mm -hmm. and was supporting a lot of those standards, which are much easier and much much lower level from a technical perspective than. Activity Pub is, yeah. But because you mentioned things like, um, you know, uh, Scalar and mm -hmm. Press Books and a few of those others, who are probably going to have a whole lot harder time leveraging Activity Pub to do yeah. anything, much less the infrastructure of what they've got is really not built to no. to work with those things well. I'm kind of curious if you have thought about implementing those things in humanities commons mm -hmm. because those are going to be a whole lot easier for yeah. all those other third party places to, to play in this space a lot, a lot more easily, I think. Yeah. And we have, um, and one of the things that's really bringing that about is the STEM ed commons and thinking about the, the formats and things that don't lend themselves well to activity pub. So yes, there absolutely is that. I really can't talk about the details on that because we're still kind of working through what that looks like. Um, part of that is really kind of getting our arms around. And one of the reasons I went, I, I just attended the Science of Team Science Insights um, uh, conference to talk to people about their work in STEM and some of the the things that they're doing and, and the types of formats that are being done. And that's partly because the, the repository uh, and wanting to support more than just humanities scholarship and art scholarship. Um, but yeah, absolutely. We're, we're looking at a number of different tools right now, um, open access tools that we may incorporate into uh, the commons. We're talking to a number of, of developers and people who are working on these things. So it's not just ActivityPub. Um, that's what we're talking about right now. Um, but there are other things that we're looking at. Um, I've also been on vacation for the last chunk of month, so mm -hmm. I haven't been watching their chat. But if you're not aware, you should find the indie web chat, of which there are 57 ways to connect to it with whatever you want to use to connect. Um, but specifically, Matthias 
spends a reasonable mm -hmm. amount of time there and you can usually get his attention, although he is on a German time zone. So it's yeah. <laughs> always hard to connect with him there. Although his English is reasonably mm -hmm. uh, good. Um, and even better for you, especially not, he's not as much into the activity pub piece, mm -hmm. but knows the indie web portion and trained in library science, which mm -hmm. is even better, although he's working in a different space now. Yeah. Although I, I think if you ever decided to grow, you could make him an offer and he would jump ship in two seconds um, because he loves this stuff. But David Shansky <laughs> knows more about WordPress and the indie web and kind of the way all these things dovetail together than any other 15 people on the planet. Thank you. Um, and has written most of the code that does that as well as, you know, I think he's worked with Matthias for yeah. going on seven or eight years now to make all that WordPress stuff work. Um, so hop in and say hi. And he'll, will. he will, he will jumpstart you and put you a year ahead of wherever you happen to be. <laughs> um, or, and or, you know, probably help fix major problems along the way. Yeah, I know Mike has been in contact with some folks and I'm not sure exactly who he's been in contact with. Um, but yeah, I will absolutely do that. And that's one or, of the things that that we're out here to yeah. do is really to make those contacts. Or put them in touch with me and I'll make mm -hmm. the introduction. I will. Too, so. Yeah, right. thank you. I appreciate that. Bonnie, we give you contacts. We give you grants. We give you everything. <laughs> what else could you want? Reclaim chat for life. I was going to say, yeah, I will. I will totally be back. This has been wonderful. And it's just been such a wonderful conversation. Um, I obviously I'm super enthusiastic and excited about this. And and but, you know, it, it, it is I don't want to understate the risk and the the sort of, you know, we're we're thinking very We're, we're we're thinking very creatively about how to do this. And so, you know, it, it is one of those things where it's it's great to get out in the community and hear people say, yeah, you might have issues with that, but it sounds awesome. Um, because it, it does help too in, in thinking through just how far we can push things too. Um, and, and just say, we're gonna blow all this up and we're gonna try something new. Um, because I think that, you know, as we've seen with Twitter and X and as we've seen with, you know, Elsevier and Wiley and some of the other things that have been happening and even academia.edu and ResearchGate. I mean, you know, if, if they don't charge for things that you're the commodity. Right. And so what we're trying to do is to say that there's another way. No, absolutely. And the expansive vision that you bring to it and that team at MSU, and I know Kathleen Fitzpatrick hearing her talk at um, Reclaim Open, like it is, it's a very exciting moment for you all and the group you're putting together to do it. There's nothing like being part of a group that's doing exciting stuff and believes in the work. So yeah. major kudos to everyone involved at MSU and beyond, because I know it goes beyond there. And thank you very much for taking the time today to sit down, explain it, share it. We'll have this video. We'll put it back online. We really appreciate it. And I'll be talking more and more about the work you all are doing. And I hope Reclaim can partner with you in some yeah. way to figure out some of those pieces. So you let us know if we can do anything. But again, just amazing work. So thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, thank you. And I have to say, we all, the, the team was going to go into a team meeting. We actually paused to watch her keynote at Reclaim <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> awesome. because we wanted to see it too. Uh, but yeah, I will say it's, I've, I've never worked with a better group of people in terms of just the expansive thinking and the willingness to kind of take the risk and say, we're just going to do this. And we hope we find collaborators and we have, you know, we have had people, but I appreciate all the feedback and the names and the information and reclaim is absolutely. I mean, like I said, I've published two sites. I run a project on reclaim through domain of one's own. So I'm, you know, we're very, we're very excited about that too. And I think that, you know, as we roll this out, there's definitely, you know, opportunity for, for all kinds of groups to get involved, not just those who want commons is, but those who support the infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and you said it earlier, open infrastructure and what that looks like, and there's not enough of it. And this is a key development in the field 
to make it and build it and think about it. And if it fails, anything could fail, but the fact that you're doing it is freaking awesome. So again, kudos, big fan, Reclaim, loves MSU Mesh for life. Yeah, and we love you guys too because it's been it's been fantastic, and just this has been a such a great conversation. So thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we'll close it out there. Thanks everyone for coming, and we'll see you next month. Next month we might talk about something as cool as a new product that Reclaim Reclaim Press Ooh, off the presses. Yes, get ready. That should be fun. I'm gonna be writing about it and doing it. It's pretty fun. We're gonna have like managed WordPress kind of WordPress as a service which could actually template some of this stuff. So yeah. anyway, more on that next month, but thanks everyone for coming.